I'd like to thank John for the kind words and, and also he and the rest of the staff at the OEOC. Maybe if I move over this way, you can hear. Thank you for the feedback. The, uh, the staff at the OEOC has done a remarkable job of promoting uh, ESOPs in Ohio. Among all the industrialized states, Ohio has more employee-owned owned companies and more employee owners on a per capita basis than any other state, including California, Joe. Why is Ohio such a leader in employee ownership? A lot has to do with what's been done the last 21 years at the Ohio Employee Ownership Center, and they deserve a lot of the credit for that. And I think our state leaders are finally awakening to the real economic potential of unleashing employee ownership in this state. It's one of the real secrets we have for competing uh, nationally and globally. John asked me to do this keynote speech um, to share with you some of the things we've been doing to reinvent our company these last five or six years um, and to turn our employee owners into venture capitalists. Before I get started, I'd like to introduce you a little bit to who EBO Group is. Uh, you've known us for most of our association with ESOPs by our original name, PT Tech, or Power Transmission Technology. We became an ESOP in 1990. We have 61 employee owners. Mm, it'll be 62 on Monday. And in 2006, we changed our name to EBO Group for reasons that you'll understand by the time I finish this little talk. What do we do? In the first couple of years we were in business, we solved a major problem in underground coal mining machinery. We figured out a way to absorb the shock loads and the cutter head drives, increasing the safety and reliability and the productivity of the machines. And that led us deep into the underground mining industry, developing clutches and brakes for all manners of machines. We figured as long as we were underground, we might as well tackle tunnel boring machinery. And we developed uh, a clutch, a hydraulic clutch that was used very successfully through the 80s and the 90s for that equipment. Uh, the biggest privately owned civil engineering project in the 20th century was the tunnel under the English Channel, and all the machines on the main drives were equipped with our clutches. It was a fun project. If you've watched extreme machines on the Discovery Channel, many of those machines are equipped with our product. Now, we came above ground in the 90s, and we started developing product for the steel industry and other heavy industries. Um, if you kind of get the picture, we really like big, ugly, awesome equipment. <laughs> uh, throughout the 90s, the mining, steel, and tunneling accounted for over 90% of our business. If we look at our sales for the up through 2003, the first 20 years through 98, we only had two down years. It was, we had really very nice growth. But then we hit 98, and globally, things started to change. A lot of jobs started going over, overseas. Uh, we had customers going out of business uh, faster than we could develop new product to replace those customers. Um, so we started looking a lot like a lot of companies in Ohio that was fo were focused on um, rust belt industries. And um, we're, we're, not, we're not real quick at understanding these things. After a, a couple, two or three years of being into this cycle, we figured maybe trying to grow our business in a declining market wasn't the smartest thing we could be doing. So we decided to start to focus our efforts into growth markets. 
And the first growth market we went after was recycling equipment, um, big machines that grind up waste for landfills, for biomass. We, de we developed a drive system that d connected the engine up to 1,600 horsepower, these big engines, to the grinding head that does all the work. And um, we went from being a very small player in that market six years ago to dominating that market with 90% of that market. Again, you can see our love for big, ugly, awesome equipment. In 2002, the employee owners of PT Tech did something extraordinary. They became venture capitalists. They started a whole new venture in a whole new market, a whole different technology. We founded Transmotion Medical. We hired the right people. We gave them the tools they needed to develop what they needed to develop, which was medical chairs uh, that convert into stretchers and do procedures for uh, uh, hospitals and surgery centers. And they've gone from nothing in five years to the premier product in the market. Very, very fast-growing business. We discovered something in the process, that our culture, our employee-owned culture, was an awesome place to start new ventures. By the way, these, the recycling market and medical market now account for more than half our business. So instead of following the trend of what has happened to a lot of Ohio manufacturing companies, especially those focused in the in the Rust Belt Industries, this is what happened. We will come close to tripling our business in a five-year period by focusing on new markets and by launching new ventures. So why would you want to turn your employee owners into venture capitalists? Uh, faster growth. If you're not happy with the growth that you have, maybe you should be looking at doing something like this. Greater profits. We've definitely seen greater profits in focusing on growth markets and doing some reinvention. Job creation. Excitement. There's definitely a lot of excitement when you go to start something new within your organization. Diversification. If you're stuck on one market and you're riding the cycle of that one market, diversifying can definitely help. It can especially help what's happening out in the shop where people's jobs um, and are, are dependent on a steady flow of work. And if you're tied to one market, uh, the down times are, are tough times. Uh, by stretching, by diversifying, you can switch the shop employment from one side of the business to the, to the other side, and we've seen a, a real benefit in doing that. But the number one reason is the reason all us ESOP companies, the thing we all love, and that's to watch our stock grow, and um, it's a great way to, to grow your stock value. These are all good reasons for thinking about starting a new venture within your ESOP, but here's the disclaimer. The Ohio Department of Development calls this the valley of death. Most new ventures fail as they go through the process of imagining, incubating, demonstrating, market entry, and finally growth and sustainability where you're actually making money. Each of these phases are packed with places where the project can fail, and most do. But ESOP companies have a natural advantage that no other way of starting a company has. 
Number one, they have access to capital. A lot of them have excess capital looking for places. Where, where are we going to spend our money next? The ESOP companies, a lot of them are very, very successful. They have an existing business structure that can support an entrepreneur or an entrepreneurial team working on a new project. Typically, ESOP companies exhibit teamwork well above what a normal company has, especially if you have a, a collaborative participatory uh, uh, program in your ESOP. But here's, here's the magic. When you start a new company within your ESOP, every ESOP participant has a piece of the action. They have a natural desire to see this thing succeed that provides exceptional support for those people trying to start a new business. What we found within Transmotion Medical was that we could send the two people that we had start this business, two designers, we could send them anywhere in the company to get any kind of help they needed, and they got it freely with great enthusiasm. The odds of success of starting a new company with an ESOP should be significantly better than the odds in other places. Typical incubators in old factories, uh, incubators in university settings, uh, new ventures within non-ESOP companies can't match this list of advantages. Well, if I've got your interest, where do you find ideas for new ventures? Universities. Uh, we ended up finding some technology out at Bowling Green State University that had not been commercialized, and we partnered with them to do a development. NASA, up in Cleveland, has an office that they look for people that can commercialize ideas that they've come up with. Uh, not a bad place to look. We are actually collaborating with NASA and the University of Toledo on a new uh, offshore wind turbine project where we'll be making a couple of the key components of it. Venture capital conferences. We're just beginning to explore this avenue. Jumpstart is a group in Northeast Ohio that's only four years old that is supporting the idea of venture capitalists coming together with the entrepreneurial people trying to get companies started. And they're not only supporting the entrepreneurs uh, in many ways, um, they're, they're really bringing them the, the, uh, the management expertise that they need to, and the, the support they need to make the presentations to people like you. We've had some preliminary discussions with Jumpstart, and they're quite interested in working with us to perhaps use us as an incubator in future projects. We uh, have a number of economic development people here. Uh, if you contact your local economic development people, they know what's going on in the, in the community. They may be a source of ideas. But don't ignore your own employees. The idea for starting Transmotion Medical at our company did not come from the top. It came from a new employee in the purchasing department that had left a company um, that had been closed down in our community. And um, he was with us four or five months, and he said, uh, you know, you guys could make the same stuff that our company did, uh, medical equipment, and the guru that knows how to do it is looking for a job. And that was the start of Transmotion Medical. It's interesting, and we had a CEO uh, session uh, yesterday, and uh, uh, we, we found out that, um, that uh, IBM does a survey every year of uh, where, the, where does innovation come from within companies. And the number one place that innovation comes from is the employees. This is not ESOPs. This is just in general. Now, if you have an ESOP company, 
you should really be listening to your employees. Uh, before I leave that subject, um, you should note that whatever you do in the, looking at new ventures, you should make sure they align with what the strategic plan for your business is. Funding. How do you fund new ventures? Well, for five years, we funded all our new venture work with our employee owners acting as our venture capitals. We've done it successfully. And the growth we've had has been challenging financially, but it's a good challenge. Uh, venture capital and angel capital is just something we're beginning to explore. The federal government has SBIRs to help develop new technologies and, and new businesses. And the state of Ohio, yes, the state of Ohio actually funds new technologies, especially new technologies that will create significant jobs in the state. About, uh, we, we, we've been involved with power and energy since the beginning of our company. And about four years ago, we recognized that the fastest growing part of the power and energy industry was renewable energy. So we started studying how to participate in that uh, market. We found at Ipasol two years ago, standing for Innovative Power and Energy Storage Solutions, at the same time, we recognized that PT Tech was no longer the proper umbrella organization for the direction we were headed, and we changed our name to EBO Group. Uh, the results of IPASOL so far has been four patents pending on some interesting solar technology and a book called Exponential Solar. If you want to become an expert in whatever field you want to become an expert in, all you have to do is write a book. <laughs> um, and by the way, the, as John mentioned, the books are for sale up at the counter up front, and uh, you, or you can buy them on Amazon for fifteen dollars. But um, but we, we're uh, donating the proceeds of the book sales uh, today to the Ohio Employee Ownership Center, so buy them here if you're going to buy them. It, it, it sh it's the first book that really shows how renewable energy does ultimately replace uh, all the fossil fuels that we use, um, and, it sh and it shows the importance of energy storage. Um, but in the writing of the book and the learning about the renewable energy marketplace, we stumble upon a technology at Bowling Green that had not been commercialized that we felt played a very important part in the future. And uh, so we partnered with Bowling Green and we went after state funding through the Ohio Advanced uh, Energy Program. And uh, Lieutenant Governor Lee Fisher, who was the keynote speaker last year here, uh, John had to settle for me this year. Uh, last month, John announced uh, a million-dollar grant uh, to EBO Group for the development of our third new venture in the last five years, or six years, Triton Hybrid Drives, developing hybrid drive systems for commercial vehicles that will ultimately be plug-in hybrids uh, for many urban kind of vehicles. If you're wondering what hybrid drives have to do with solar energy, you have to buy the book. <laughs> we, uh, by the way, we emphasize employee ownership in going after the grant money, and I, I really do think the state is, is waking up to the, the economic importance of supporting ESOP organizations. In Ohio, we seem to be a um, somewhat of a pioneer in the concept of launching new ventures within an ESOP. And I was feeling pretty good about what we were doing until Karen Thomas of the Employee Ownership Center handed me this book. It turns out that SAIC 
in California has been doing this for decades. Dr. Beister started Science Application International Corporation and grew it to $8 billion in 35 years without any venture capital, without any Wall Street money, simply using his employee owners as his venture capitalists, going after government contracts and government grants. Really extraordinary. As I compared them with us, the good news, the bad news was that they had grown their company to a size 400 times bigger than us. But the good news is we have five years to catch up. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like being in the ninth inning of a ball game and you're down 400 to 1. It's not mathematically impossible. Led by Keith Nichols, our president, for the past 13 years. Keith, why don't you stand up for a moment? In five years, we've gone from a Rust Belt company serving declining markets and with declining sales and declining stock value to a fast-growing uh, company developing products that the world needs for the growing energy and medical markets. And these are the employee owners that made it happen, who became venture capitalists and reinvented our company, who positioned the company to be awarded our first government grant, and who willingly take on incredible challenges with amazing teamwork to make EBO Group a exciting, rewarding, and mostly fun place to work. And it doesn't make any difference whether we catch up with SAIC or not. If this is reward enough working with these guys. And that's our story. I hope this uh, might encourage you to at least explore the idea of starting new things in your company. Certainly. The idea of reinventing yourself to compete in the global economy is an important thing. You guys are all involved in a very exciting, uh, the exciting employee ownership community that has, as, as most of you know, they've been at this long enough. It's a great community with great support around Ohio, and um, I wish you all the greatest success.